Hello and welcome to Distort, the show where we distort time to show you things you might otherwise miss with the human eye. I'm David Prager, and here in place of Mauricio is... Dr. Kiki. Who joins us in, uh, for a second time. Thanks again for coming on to teach us about the colder side of things. Now we're gonna talk about hot, hot, the hot. hotter side of things. We're talking yeah. about fire. Everyone knows about fire. Everyone from time to time probably has played with fire. But we wanted to use so. our cameras and show it not only in slow motion, but explain the fundamental basics of what fire is. What so, is fire? How does it work? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fire is a combustion reaction. So there are three elements. You can call it the fire triangle mm -hmm. that are necessary for any fire to take place. You need heat, you need oxygen, and you need fuel. Okay. And then you get fire. What makes it begin? All right, so you can have fire started in a couple of ways. You can have a fire started by a spark, or you can just have fire started by a buildup of heat. So you've heard of spontaneous combustion. Mm -hmm. A pile of oily rags, if left in an environment where the heat in that pile of rags builds up to the ignition point mm -hmm. of the material, of the fuel, then it'll just start burning. And for um, a spark-led fire, Basically what you are doing is creating a very hot point that can lead to heat buildup in a larger mass of fuel. Mm -hmm. And so what you're doing with a match is by rubbing it against a surface, you are using friction to increase the heat temperature of the tip of the match. And the tip of the match is covered by some element, usually phosphorus mixed with some other stuff. Mm -hmm. And when the heat reaches the ignition point of the phosphorus, then the phosphorus ignites, it burns, it converts into um, a white from red phosphorus to white phosphorus, white phosphorus burns even hotter, and that will burn the wood that's underneath. And so then you actually have the fire of the wood. So the phosphorus is used to increase the heat enough to get the wood to burn. And so uh, we have a bunch of footage of this awesome little device, which is flint and steel. steel. And so steel has iron in it. Iron is very reactive with oxygen. Mm -hmm. It likes to be oxidized. And you rub the steel against the flint. And the flint is harder than the steel. You might not think so. It's a, it's a crystalline structure. It's a rock. Mm -hmm. And it's harder than the steel, which as the materials are rubbing together, it breaks off little pieces of steel, mm -hmm. which have little pieces of iron in them that burn really hot sure because of the friction. I'm sure you want to do that. I do want to do it. Ah! I love it. So basically, this is just a, this is a great camping tool. We know that sparks create fires. This is an easy way to have abundance of sparks. Abundance of sparks. If you had to make fire and you didn't have anything, you gotta think friction. Can you find you know, those pieces of wood and create a, a pile of kindling that can catch sparks? If you can find some flint rocks mm -hmm. to knock against each other. Yeah, so it's just you know, rubbing two sticks together very, 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 very fast. Very fast, on, 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 right, right. With a lot of little kindling Did you pieces. ever do that? Were you a Boy Scout? Did you do that? I don't remember ever successfully <laughs> starting from zero. The one thing that I do remember starting a fire from zero was using a magnifying glass. Right, and so that is just using the heat of the sun, magnifying light from the sun to a pinpoint on something and yep. letting it heat up to its ignition point. I gotcha, that's amazing. Yeah. So thanks so much for being on the show again and teaching us all about fire, or the reasons that we enjoy to create our own little fires and explosions and stuff. Um, I, I love it too, so you're welcome. Awesome. Absolutely. So tell people where they can find you. You can find me on Twitter, Dr. Kiki. I also do a show called This Week in Science. If you just need more science knowledge, go to twist.org. Yep. So thanks again for watching the show, and we will see you next time.